Hello everyone, welcome to the amalgam class today. So whenever we do a lower amalgam, we need to understand is we need to correct the A first before we start doing the amalgam. Same concept applies if you're doing a complex composite on a molar as well. We need some sort of anatomy. Again, I'm not a big favor. I'm not in big favor always that you keep working with the anatomy too much, but what we see, especially with amalgams, if you don't know the correct anatomy, you miss or miss out on a couple of points. And once the A goes wrong, everything else goes wrong. So look at this photo here. This is your buckle. Okay, this is the buckle, this is the mesial. This is the lingual, this is the distal, okay? This is a four six we are talking about. Just imagine this is a four six, the line passing. Now, distal buckle, cause in buckle we have three cusps, right? Mesial buckle, distal buckle, and then distal. So this is the mesial buckle, okay? This is the distal buckle. This is the distal, this is the triangular fossa, triangular fossa, mesolingual, distolingual. Now, you will see if we draw an imaginary, imaginary line from the center of the tooth. Okay, let me draw an imaginary line from this. And from the center of the tooth here you would see that what will happen is the distal buccal cusps will go from center, crosses the central line here, crosses the central line here. So it goes from here all the way and it forms like an A like that. Now this is your main guiding. If you don't have this wrong and you keep it don't cross the central groove and keep it there. That's the time your whole anatomy goes wrong and your cusp positioning and everything goes wrong. So making sure your distal buckle, once your distal buckle is right, this mesial buckle follows like that. And then this, because it crosses the midline, it divides both the lingual cusps. So mes distal lingual goes like that. Mesial lingual goes like this. This still goes like this. This is the triangular grooves, triangular fossa. Which is a slight bit of depression, not too much that we wanted to create too much. That's your basic anatomy. Now, what a lot of people do is they don't get the A right. Until and unless you don't get this A right, your anatomy is not gonna correct on its own. So making sure whenever you do your molar amalgams, this is your demarcation A. If your A is good, imaginary right center, when it goes to the mesial side, when it crosses to the mesial, it only just touches, crosses, it don't go too much. But when it crosses the lingual side, it does go a bit more here and that divides, divides the mesial cusps. So if you get the A right, everything else follows and you would end up having a good one. That's your one cusp, other cusps. And this is like the slope, center. That's your cusp location. Everything else becomes better. Now, if I if we, if I look a bit closer, see if I can zoom in. This is a three six, not a four six, but just to give you a bit of an idea. Look at where the distal buckle is going. Look at the distal buckle. If you draw an imaginary line. Let me just mark all of that. So if you see the distal buckle, see how much it goes in in the center.
Look at that. And then what happens is the other two cusps start to divide. And that's very important. Look at your actual natural tooth and you will see if you get this A right, making sure crosses the midline on both sides. If you get your A right, your whole anatomy gets better and everything starts to fall. If you don't get this A right, everything just starts to distort. So if I make a quick diagram again. Because this lower six is normally a bit more of a triangular, yeah? Mesial, distal, buccal, palatal, or lingual, lingual. Okay, it's a lower two. Now, what we wanna see is imaginary line. Okay. Now, one more thing that you have to identify, a lot of people say, where do I find that A? Just see that line. There's some lines that are already there. Whenever you try to create anatomy, you'll be in big trouble because it's very tricky to do it unless you are very good with your hand skill and you know your anatomy really well. If you don't know your anatomy well, what's gonna happen, you will try to create anatomy and then you'll end up in trouble. So what I tell everyone, try not to create anatomy. You already have those guiding slits there, just follow it. So I put my, literally, I put my amalgam carver here and follow it through where it's taking me. Follow it through where it's taking me. If you follow it through, you'd automatically see it take you like that and forms the A. Follow this line, it takes you like that. Follow this line at the distal, it takes you somewhere there. And then what you need to do is once you've got the A right, this joins like here, palatal divides, lingual divides, and you get to get a rough idea of your anatomy. So just get the A right, and how to get the A right? Just follow the points. It's taking you, just put your carver along the line and goes right there, right there. And just take it from there, automatically takes you there. Once you've got the A right, and you've joined this line, it forms like this. Distal follows, triangular fossa. Triangular fossa. You've automatically got your anatomy right. So never try to recreate anatomy, get your A right. If you turn it like that, that's the A that we talk about. Now, a lot of people you might see, they say it's more of a Y, not an A. So the, the way they say Y is, can you see how this forms? So they say that it's a Y. But either A or Y, making sure get this right. If you get this right, following it along, everything becomes better. So making sure do some diagrams on the paper. What I've seen with amalgam, and you'll see the endo as well, until and unless you don't practice on the paper, you can never learn it in the mouth. So anatomy, do some diagrams first, get this concept right. Once you got this concept right, later everything starts to follow. So making sure that you do this, practice a bit, and then from there, have a look at the natural tooth. Have a look at the natural tooth. You'll start to see how much the A goes, where does it go, and you start to see the anatomy really, really well. So if you darken it up, you'll be able to see a bit better when you are in person rather than the video. Let's see in the next chapter on step-to-step -step guide on doing the amalgam task.